it's Melina from Xactimate Mastery with today's Tuesday Tech Tip. And what we're going to talk about is the five tips to making your photos better, making your reports easier for adjusters to accept and uh, go through, and a couple other things. So uh, let's go take a look. First of all, I want to get you set up correctly in Xactimate with your photos. So what we're going to do is um, we're first going to add some photos. Because if you don't add the photos first, you can't see these options. So I'm going to go up to Images, over here in the top left corner. This is where you're going to add all of your photos in Xactimate. And then we are going to load the images here. And I've got this one that I need uh, to work on called Bad Photos. So we've got some examples for me to show you today. It's going to be great. So we're going to open those. Okay, so now our photos are loaded. And to get out of the screen, unfortunately, we have to use the red X. I don't like that because I like to close or save or what have you, but we are going to use the red X here, or you can use your escape key to close this window and get back to the estimate screen where we were. And then we're going to go to print to set up these options. So in your print window here, you've got an images section. So I'm going to go on over to the images sub tab here. And again, you have to have photos loaded in order to see these options or else they won't show up. So I think the default is one per page in Xactimate whenever you load the program and, and use it. You want it to be two per page. So one per page will make your report really long, it'll make the file size a little bit bigger, and it's just not as easy to use. With two per page, it makes it easier you know, for the adjuster to receive your report, and then uh, they're still large enough that you can see them. When you get down to four or eight per page, they get really quite small, and if you're writing a description next to the photo, then it can wander off onto the next page and it gets real messy. So two seems to be the magic number for how many images per page. Then you always want to have print image details selected and then print image annotations. Okay, so that will be useful here in the future. I'll show you what your image, image annotations are. It's actually quite cool. Now that we've got that set up, let's go over to print options here. And you're going to select images off of the print selection list. Make sure that's checked or else they won't show up. Let's go ahead and view this report and take a look. Your images are usually at the very end. And whoa, crazy things are happening. Hey, at least we've got the two per page. That looks great. But wow, uh, they're sideways and uh, kind of looking crazy there. So let's go to tip number two, which is taking your photos correctly with your cell phone or with the camera. It does make a difference. Sorry, I had to go get my phone so I could show you. So when you take photos, your inclination is to do this. I guess it's because we hold it and we talk and text this way. But that's what co is causing those photos to look so strange is because I took them this way. If you take them this way, your life becomes a lot easier. So as you can see right now, those photos are sideways. So let's go back up to the photo section here. And you can see when they loaded, just double click that to expand it, you can see that this is has loaded simply because I took it this way, it's loaded it sideways. So yes, I can turn it and rotate it. No problems there. First of all, if you do this, um, you now have to take the time to rotate each photo, um, unless you have a, a photo editor that can bulk edit that. Um, and the other problem with that is now when we go back over to our report and take a look at what it's going to look like when it prints out, those photos that were taken in portrait style take up um, more of the page. It's very strange how they formatted this, but also they become smaller. So it, it's it's hard if you're trying to you know show really great detail and uh, show the adjuster exactly what damages they missed or or you know whatever your reasons for taking the photos are um, when they ta are taken like this photo landscape. You can see the big picture, but whenever you take it uh, portrait and then have to rotate, this is what it looks like. So if you can get into the mode of operating of always taking your pictures this way, it'll show up a lot better on your reports and uh, your life can, becomes a little bit more easy because now you don't have to rotate each one whenever you import. So that was tip number two. Tip number three is the annotations. I love the annotations. So going back up to the images section here, we can actually draw or um, type text on these photos. I'm going to double click to expand it. And then here's where you're going to see your annotation section. So there's a small dent here that uh, we were trying to point out in the photo. Kind of hard to see. Um, in this photo, I've got some cornice returns here that I want to point out, so on and so forth. So in order to do that, you can use these paint-like, they call them annotations, but there's just like using a paint. You can add ellipses. 
You can type some text here. Now you have to draw the box as big as you want your text or else it gets kind of funky. So cornice uh, return here, turn strip, and so on and so forth. You've got arrows, you've got all kinds of fun things. If you ever make a mistake, you can undo, okay? That's something that I had to learn the hard way. I kept on having to undo all. You can just undo your last action right here. Uh, but yes, this is very useful to point out exactly what you're trying to show, damage or what they missed, material or labor-wise, to the adjuster. So there are some cool apps like Company Cam that you can do this out on site and uh, draw some really cool things and add your, your notes or your tags. But here, if you forget or maybe you know uh, needed to point out something else, you can also do it in ExactMe. So that's a, a neat thing to do and it's called the annotations. So if you need your annotations to ever have, you know, red, or maybe maybe you have a red roof and you need blue, you can always go over here to the settings and then change any of these uh, options here. I like the um, circle to be very chunky, thick, I like that line to be thick. So I change it from this very thin line to a, a, a bigger line that you can see in the photos. And then also I like my text to be, my font size to be quite large. So that those are two settings that I recommend you changing because they do come in kind of wimpy and I think I think black is the default color, which is very hard to see on, on photos like this. So that is your annotations. And again, make sure in your print that you've got this checkbox, print with annotations, or else you'll be doing all that work and they won't show up. So hopefully that will be useful to you to point out damage or things that are missed by the adjuster if you're sending in a supplement estimate there. The next tip, tip number four, is taking too many photos. I see this a lot of on a lot of reports that I, I look over for other contractors and uh, there's even some adjusters that do this, just um, attaching a whole bunch of extraneous photos when you only need the ones that pertain to what you're trying to point out to the adjuster. So instead of adding 55 photos here, you should only add the photos that show explicit damage. You probably won't need to include photos of items that are already paid, like if they have bought the whole roof, you don't really need to attach uh, photos of hail hits. Maybe one or two would be great if you're just, you know, showing that what damage was existing on the roof before you tear it off. But you don't need a, a whole bunch of photos of something that's already been paid. So make the adjuster's life easier. They'll thank you for it. And only attach photos of labor and materials missed or new damage that you found. And I'm sure you'll have a happy adjuster on your hands. Okay, so that's tip number four. Too many photos. The other tip is not having a context photo. So this is a great example right here. I get these all the time. Um, from people that, uh, you know, looking over the reports, is they'll attach just this photo and no context. So we don't know how big, how large the garage door is. We don't know where it's located. Um, and many other questions are unanswered by just attaching this. So not only do you want to attach the photo of damage, but you probably want to go ahead and attach a photo of the um, elevation where the damage was done. So I might Click right here since this is a condo situation. Say this, you know, type in this is the where the garage door was damaged, and that way the adjuster has some context. So if they have to go do a reinspect, or if they're trying to show their supervisor why it needs to be paid, say it was at the front elevation. It's a one-car garage door. That's the size that they're asking for. We're not asking for this one. We're asking for just the single, and they have a lot of more information on their hands than just attaching a picture of a ding to the garage. Okay, you can't really see the ding in this one, can you? Yeah, I probably need a better photo of that too. So there's a mode of operandum when taking your photos that you should do the same thing the same way every time. So it's just like a repeated process and it becomes second nature. You'll get faster and faster at doing this if you do it the same way every time. So what I like to tell people is work top down and then work counterclockwise. So if you've ever looked at a adjuster's estimate that has roof siding and uh, all the elevations covered. They usually put the roof on top, right? So that's how, where you want to start with your pictures. Take all your roof photos. Then we get down off the roof and we, we work from front, right, rear, then left. And you'll see most adjuster reports are written that way. But if you can follow the same exact system every time, you'll become really quick at this. So even if there's a, no damage at that elevation, it can reveal other things to someone who's sitting in the office trying to write your supplement estimates or maybe if you, you know, so you don't forget later on that maybe there was a pipe jack there that was missed on that elevation so it shows you which slope. Um, you know, trying to piece together where window screens go on the house, it's nice to have, you know, the, the left elevation where the screen resides and then a picture of each of the window screens so you can see this is where it, went, where it was damaged and then of course the close-up of the damage itself helps everybody out, paints the 
big picture of what's going on out in the field. You have to remember a lot of these adjusters, too, are desk adjusters, and they don't get out to the property and don't have the luxury of uh, being able to look at the damage themselves, and they're trying to recreate all this using the information you're giving them. So the better the information, the easier it is on the adjuster, the more likelihood you'll get your items paid, and then everybody's happy. So this has been Alina Wilson with Xactimate Mastery. Go ahead and go to www.xm8mastery.com to subscribe for newsletters like this delivered right into your inbox every week. See you next week.